Happy morning, it's Madhusudan here with FinTraders. So today we're going to be looking at a chapter in financial markets and products with the FRM part one. We're going to be looking at using futures for hedging, right? A very interesting topic and as FRM uh, you know, certified uh, users, if financial analysts, you will be coming across scenarios where you need to mitigate risk and using futures and options it's a great way to hedge and futures is what we're going to be looking at today and for those of you who might not know what a future is i just to give a quick intro a futures is traded on an exchange compared to a forward which is over the over the counter this is actually traded on the cme or one of these commodity exchanges or currency exchanges or even if it's an equity thing it could be in an equity exchange and how are we going to be using this to hedge the risk that is going to be the topic for today. And as you know, a future, you know, when you purchase it, which you call it as long the future, and when you sell it, it is called as short the future. When you are purchasing, that is going long the future, you get that price locked. So tomorrow, if the underlying, which is a commodity, currency, whatever it might be, goes up, it doesn't impact you because you already locked it. The same thing happens on the reverse. When you are shorting the future, you are locking the price. Even if it goes below, you are able to sell it at that price. You have shorted the future. So now let's jump into this one very quickly. I'm going to do a little bit of theory and then go look at two problems to explain this concept to you really well. So first thing, as I said, the short hedge, you have to short the futures contract and we do it against a price decrease. Let's assume the oil is trading at $80 and tomorrow I'm going to be getting another uh, million barrels at, uh, tomorrow as in, in a month's time frame. I'm worried that the oil might fall. In that scenario, I might go ahead and sell the equivalent amount of future contracts to hedge against it. So, so next month, let's say the oil price falls to $70, I am still getting it at the price at which I sold or shorted the future contract, right? So examples would be oil producers, uh, agriculture commodity producers, right? So they're going to have some corn or whatever they're growing come at the time of the harvest season. And what if at that time, the price of rice, corn, whatever they have grown drops, it could be a huge loss for these farmers right so this is a great way to hedge against these losses on the long side of the hedging process similar to the short side we will take the future contract but here we would go long so there it was against a price fall this is a hedge against the price increasing right so if you are going to be procuring raw material let's assume i'm a garment manufacturer and i need cotton say two months three months down the road i need a million bales of cotton I need to ensure that the raw material doesn't go up in price. How do I do that? So we go ahead and buy the futures contract and lock the price. So tomorrow, even if the cotton prices in the spot market goes up, for me, it doesn't. So I am completely hedged. So let's look at these two examples. We're going to take a profit and loss analysis for a short hedge scenario and a long hedge scenario. All right, so let's look at one example of a short hedge and what is the panel on two different scenarios, the underlying price. So let's think of this as an oil producer, right? So we are going to get around 10 million barrels of oil produced. After three months, so roughly after three months, we will have 10 million barrels of oil. And currently, let's say the WTI spot is $80. Right, so this is the current price of the crude oil in the market. And the, for, the future price after three months that's traded in the exchange, the CME, is $81. So that's the expectation of the crude price, three months. And there's a lot of uh, underlying factors why that is being traded at 81 for our purposes. Let's go with that $81. So let's assume we will have all the 10 million barrels of oil with us after three months. So by the time the contract is going to be uh, uh, expiring, we will have all the 10 million barrels. So as a oil company, we think it is a huge risk. So even one cent 
will move the oil uh, one cent movement in the oil will create a hundred thousand dollar loss for us right so we have 10 million barrels and if you have one cent movement in that so that's a hundred thousand dollar movement either way so if it goes up we will gain a hundred thousand if it comes down we will lose a hundred thousand so it's a huge risk so let's assume we have decided to hedge this risk given the macro environment and after three months there could be two scenarios for our calculation we'll assume one scenario where the oil drops to 75 and another scenario where the oil goes up to 85. so how do we fare in either of these cases so in the first scenario the oil is now trading at 75 dollars a barrel so if you didn't hedge without hedge you would go to the market and sell it 10 million barrels into 75 you get 750 million dollars for the oil you have but now we have already hedged and we have hedged it at 81 dollars so we actually when we go and sell the oil because uh, let's assume this is a physical contract so you are expecting you to physically deliver the oil and so you are giving your 10 million barrels the person who has shorted the future and you remember we are long in uh, we are shorted the future the person who has gone long has to take the oil has to receive the oil and then you get paid 81 dollars per uh, barrel so 81 into 10 million barrels we are actually going to receive 810 million because we shorted we have the short hedge put on in the crude oil so we are protected against the drop in oil price so without the hedge we would have received 750 million now with the hedge we are getting 810 million so our profit is 810 minus 750 which is 60 million so this is hopefully clear so we look at the other scenario where the oil price has gone up right so let's assume it has gone up to 85 so this is against our expectation so in the market if we have sold without the hedge we would have received 85 dollars for each barrel 10 million barrels we would be getting 850 million dollars but we have hedged and in this case unfortunately we have hedged so we are going to be getting only 810 and 810 minus 850 we are going to be losing 40 million dollars so that is the downside sometimes sometimes like when the uh, commodity goes or the underlying goes in your favor your potential money or profit that you might make on that is capped but the good thing is the downside is locked and again here we had a little bit of a premium in the futures a one dollar premium so it kind of cushions even though the underlying went against us so here even though it's a five dollar movement the profit is 60 whereas the loss is only 40 million so we're going to now go and look at an example on the long hedge so this is going to be a short example on a long hedge uh, let's assume for this example we are a spinning mill who spins cotton and uh, makes uh, cotton fabrics so we need a hundred thousand bales of cotton in two months and right now co the cotton price for a bale is 30,000 Indian rupees so uh, also one thing to keep in mind I didn't talk about this during the short hedge is the contract size so let's assume each contract in the exchange is traded uh, it's usually not one value so it's not like one barrel or one ba bale it's usually a multiple of it so you need to know what is the right number of contracts to go long or short so in this case let's assume the cotton is traded at 25 bales and if we need a hundred thousand bales to be hedged we will uh, divide the uh, 100,000 by the number of uh, bales in a contract. So in this case, it is 25. So we need to go long 4,000 contracts. Go long 4,000 contracts. So that's important when we are uh, calculating the, the number of contracts to go long or short. So coming back to the question, what is the PL? after two months if the price is going to be 35,000 so pretty simple see we have already shorted this contract at 30,000 so and we are now seeing the cotton price at 35,000 so let's look at the profit so 35,000 is the current price and 30,000 is where we locked it that is the price in which we went long the future of the cotton so 5,000 rupees is the per bale 
uh, profit we are making and we have hedged for 100,000 bales, that is 4,000 contracts each for 25 bales. So 100,000 bales into 5,000. So that is a 500 million rupee profit or 50 crores of profit we made by locking the cotton price. So powerful and in fluctuating commodities like cotton, it does make sense to hedge. It's a very important tool for us uh, financial risk managers to be aware of. I hope you found this thing useful and if you have any questions leave a comment and we will get back to you.